Today's top stories. Search and rescue operations continue as a death toll in Bicol region due to Osman reaches 105. The military joins the PNP in security preparations for this year's translation in Quiapo. Malacanang is set to release guidelines for the implementation of the re-enacted national budget. And Bacolod City is celebrating Chinese New Year with a twist with the launching of this year's Bacalaudiat Festival. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippine National Police has named Daraga Mayor Carlwin Baldo as the mastermind in the murder of Acubico Representative Rodel Batocabe. In a press conference earlier today, PNP Chief Director General Oscar Albayalde said the PNP is set to file charges against Baldo and his alleged cohorts. Batocabe and his police escort SPO1 Orlando Diaz were gunned down at a gift-giving activity on December 22nd. Baldo earlier denied involvement in the said crime. Meanwhile, Malacanang is optimistic that justice will be served soon for Batocabe and Diaz. This as Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar hailed the release of the artist's sketch of two suspects in the killing. A 50 million peso reward was earlier offered to anyone who could give information leading to the suspects. The PNP is considering the angle that the killing was politically motivated as Batocabe was running for mayor in Daraga. Rescuers continue to search for corpses and possible survivors in landslides brought about by Tropical Depression Usman. This as about 105 people have so far been reported dead in the Bicol region. Rom Dulfo has the story. The death toll in the Bicol region due to Tropical Depression Usman has climbed to 105. The latest report from the Office of Civil Defense or OCD in the region showed that the highest death toll was reported in Camarines Sur with 57 validated deaths. 53 others were injured and 23 went missing. The OCD says search and retrieval operations are still going on in the towns of Sagnay, Buhi, and Balatan in Camarines Sur and in Tiwi Albay. At least 30 bodies were retrieved in a landslide hit part of Sagnay. Camarines Sur, which declared a state of calamity, was the most affected by Usman, followed by Albay, Camarines Norte, Sorsogon, and Masbate. As of midnight, OCD reports 8,000 families still remain in various evacuation camps in Camarines Sur and Albay. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways said clearing operations are still ongoing in most of the road networks affected by flooding and landslides. The Angmaharlika Road in Nabua Town is not passable to light vehicles while the Sipokot Road is partially closed with one lane due to road slip. Classes in all levels in Bicol were suspended and would resume on Monday next week. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufa. Malacanang is set to release guidelines for government agencies as it implements a reenacted national budget this 2019. Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno says the government will use the 2018 General Appropriation Act after Congress failed to pass the proposed 3.75 trillion peso proposed budget. Diokno is confident that lawmakers will swiftly pass the 2019 budget once their regular session resumes on January 14. The House of Representatives delayed the passage of the budget and allegations of budget insertions. The government is expected to implement the reenacted budget until February this year. The National Food Authority is sending about 150,000 sacks of rice to parts of Bicol region that were ravaged by Tropical Depression Usman. The allocated rice, which is seen to be enough to feed the region for 40 days, will be sold at 27 pesos per kilo. NFA Acting Administrator Thomas Escara says the rice stock, which includes imported rice, is being unloaded in ports in Bicol. The NFA released nearly 7,000 sacks to the provincial government and local government units. Meanwhile, the NFA has in stock eight months' worth of imported rice, while rice buffer stocks are expected to last by 134 days more compared to last year. The U.S. government joins other countries in condemning the bomb attack in Cotabato City. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Immigration orders all foreigners to report their presence in the country. More on these and other news around the metro from Benj Bondok.
The United States Embassy in Manila condemned the New Year's Eve explosion in Cotabato City Mall that killed two people and injured several others. In a statement, the embassy offered condolences to the victims' loved ones and hoped for a quick recovery for the injured. It also expressed its continued support for the country's peace process. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections allotted an eight-hour voting period for the plebiscite to ratify the organic law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Voting runs from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., after which only voters within 30 meters in front of the polling place would still be allowed to vote. The first plebiscite will be on January 21, and the second plebiscite is on February 6. In other news, all foreigners are directed to register in person at the nearest Bureau of Immigration office until March 1. All registered aliens are required to report within the first 60 days of every calendar year. Resident foreign nationals who have been issued immigrant or non-immigrant visas and are holders of the Alien Certificate of Registration Identity Card are required to register. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. Still to come, the military joins the PNP in security preparations for this year's Trasasyon in Quiapo. Firecracker manufacturers in Bulacan suffer losses after this year's New Year celebration. More on this when the PNA Newsroom continues. The AFP's Joint Task Force, NCR, will help the police secure the Translacion or the Feast of the Black Nazarene in Quiapo, Manila on Tuesday, January 9. The task force will help ensure peace and order as well as the safety of devotees. AFP Public Affairs Chief Noel de Toyato says the task force will take charge in the coordination and deployment of operationally controlled units supporting the PNP. AFP Chief of Staff Benjamin Madrigal says the task force will provide additional contingency forces in view of the recent bombing in Cotobato City. The NCRPO is deploying 4,000 personnel as it goes on full alert status on Tuesday. About 2 million devotees are expected to attend the religious parade. The stock market had a good start on its first trading day for 2019, even as other markets abroad struggled with volatilities. Here is our report. Volatilities remain overseas due in part to the U.S. government shutdown, which is now on its 11th day. But the Philippine Stock Exchange Index and the peso managed to end 2019's first trading day with gains. The Bank of the Philippine Islands says the PSEI posted marginal gains as investors strove to start the year on a positive note. 
The gains came amid the quiet trading session and the volatilities that affected the regional markets. Relatively, the local currency finished the day at 52 pesos and 51 centavos from 52.58 to the greenback on the last trading day of 2018 or on December 28. BPI attributed this strength to the strong demand for the peso even after the New Year holidays. The currency pair is seen to trade between 52.45 and 52.65. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. The country's December 2018 inflation rate is seen to slide further to 5.5% as supply-side issues have been addressed and oil prices continue to decline in the international market. Senior economist Nicholas Mapa said the fourth quarter harvest season, along with grains importation at the latter part of last year, helped stabilize the supply and price for most food items. He said prices of Dubai oil has declined to levels before the implementation of tax reform, which saw an increase of 2 pesos and 50 centavos per liter for oil excise tax. Other factors such as transport fare adjustments and more oil price drops are seen to get additional boost from the looming signing of the rice tarification measure. Meanwhile, the inflation outlook appears tilted to the downside despite upward pressure from the threat of El Nino and supply cuts from petroleum exporting countries. The military is monitoring possible threats from local terror groups in Mindanao. The report comes as the United Kingdom released its travel advisory in Sulu and western and central Mindanao. AFP Chief of Staff Benjamin Madrigal Jr. says they are verifying information on the movements of terror groups in the region, such as the Maute. He urged the public to report any suspicious activity in their area to authorities. The Pangasinan police reiterates its warning to personnel against going to resto bars. And business goes bad in Bokawe's firecracker industry. More on these stories from the provinces from Janice Kabe. In Pangasinan, police are not allowed in restaurant bars. PPO Director Senior Superintendent Wilson Lopez gave the warning in the wake of a shooting incident involving four policemen in a resto bar in Urdaneta last Sunday. The four were involved in an altercation which led to one of the cops and a companion being injured. Lopez says the four cops will be relieved. In the Vau Oriental, the Philippine Army is also investigating a soldier who allegedly mauled several civilians and illegally discharged his firearm on Christmas Day. The Philippine Army's 10th Infantry Division identified the soldier as Private Junifort Agustin of the 67th Infantry Battalion based in Baganga, Davao Oriental. Agustin, along with his companion, former New People's Army member Marlon De La Torre, were arrested for physical injuries and illegal possession of firearms. In Bulacan, firecracker production for the New Year celebration has drastically dropped. The Philippine Pyrotechnics Manufacturers and Dealers Association, Incorporated says production of legal firecrackers suffered when the issuance of new permits and licenses for fireworks businesses were stopped. The province's fireworks industry directly provides livelihood opportunities to at least 100,000 individuals. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, no Filipinos are reported hurt in separate incidents in Russia and Japan. Stanley Pringle is named the PBA Best Scorer in the 2018 season. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders.
The Philippine Embassy in Moscow says no Filipino was among the fatalities of the explosion in an apartment building in Russia. Ambassador Carlos Soreta extended sympathies to the Russian government and to the families of the victims. Soreta said eight persons have been confirmed dead and more than 30 others have been reported missing due to the suspected gas explosion. An 11-month-old infant from the rubble was the latest to be rescued about 35 hours after the 10-story building's collapse. In other news, a 21-year-old man deliberately plowed into a crowd of a New Year's revelers in Tokyo, Japan. The car crash happened in the shopping district of Harajuku and injured nine persons. Authorities are investigating the incident as an act of terrorism. In our four news, former Army Captain Jair Bolsonaro was sworn in as Brazil's president on Tuesday. Bolsonaro, also a member of the conservative Social Liberal Party, took the oath of office at the National Congress building in Brasilia with his vice president, retired general Hamilton Murao. The president then sworn in his cabinet, which consists of military, evangelical, church, agricultural producers, and financial market. Bolsonaro was elected in October with 55% of the votes. He campaigned on a platform to fight crime and boost security, increase employment, and combat corruption. In his inaugural speech, Bolsonaro called for unity and a pact between society and the three different branches of government to rebuild the country. He reiterated his campaign pledges to pursue fiscal responsibility and economic growth, promote Judeo-Christian values, and carry out structural reforms. In sports, Stanley Pringle dethroned former teammate Terrence Romeo as the best scorer of the season in the Philippine Basketball Association. The Northport guard averaged 21 points per game during the 2018 season, way ahead of the incoming San Miguel combo guard. Pringle's fellow Most Valuable Player contender Jun Mar Fajardo is on second place. Third places goes to Matt Wright of Phoenix, followed by Hinebra's Japheth Aguilar and Northport's Sean Anthony. Fajardo emerged as the top rebounder of the year with 12.3 boards a game. Anthony led the league in steals with two interceptions a match. Alaska's Chris Banchero was the top disher for 2018, while incoming NLEX big man Poi Eram was the league's top blocker last season. Moralcos Baser Amer was the league's best long-range shooter, while Alaska's JV Casio was the most efficient in free throws. Bacolod City is celebrating Chinese New Year with a twist with the launching of this year's Bacolau Diat Festival, a fusion of Chinese tradition and Bacolod-style feasting. Janis Cave has the story. The Chinese New Year is synonymous with firecrackers, dragon and lion dances, family feasts, and religious rituals. Bacolod City celebrates this differently with colorful lanterns, street dancing, and traditional rituals with a local twist. Bacolod Diet originated from Baco for Bacolod and Laudiet, a Fukien word for celebration. The festival will be held on February 1 to 5, the first day of the Lunar New Year, based on the traditional Chinese calendar. Among the highlights of the five day celebration is Bacolau Diet Lantern Dance Competition. Meanwhile, the celebration kicks off with the traditional Dazzling Grand Parade led by the local Filipino Chinese community and Chinese schools. Other events include cultural events, nightly fireworks display, and lantern making contest. The Chopsticks Alley features Chinese food stalls and traditional cooking demos, while the Imperial Village showcases Asian arts and crafts such as calligraphy, wishing tree, and palm reading. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country.
Here's another look at today's top stories. Search and rescue operations continue as a death toll in Bicol region due to Osman reaches 105. The military joins the PNP in security preparations for this year's translation in Quiapo. Malacanang is set to release guidelines for the implementation of the re-enacted national budget. And Bacolod City is celebrating Chinese New Year with a twist with the launching of this year's Bacalaudiat Festival. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.